So I did get out snaking a couple times this year. I like to go into areas that I'm not familiar with and look for snakes, see what's there, uh, identify the snakes, try to capture them on video. Didn't have a whole lot of luck this year, but I do have a couple clips to share with you. Uh, today I'm dealing with the Eastern Cottonmouth. Uh, first I want to show you one clip, very brief clip of a water snake that's often confused with the water moccasin or Eastern Cottonmouth. Uh, it's a thick-bodied, dark snake. It can be rather long, maybe four or five feet. And it's very quick. It spends much of its time in the water and it eats aquatic life like uh, frogs and fish. I've seen these uh, snakes eat catfish with big old heads. I mean, take them right down. Uh, this year, all I captured of this snake was uh, it briefly going through the water. I'll show it in regular speed and then in slow speed just so you kind of get a look at it and, and realize that this is a water snake. It's not a water moccasin or cottonmouth. Uh, like I said, it's a thick-bodied, kind of dark snake. It has banding, but by the time it, it passes its young stage, the banding is gone. It's adult life. It doesn't have much of a banding that you can see. And uh, I have two other clips of the eastern cottonmouth. One is dead on the side of the road. And this is to show the sad state of reality that uh, people will swerve to miss squirrels and rabbits, which are so erratic on the road, they go every which way. You can't miss them. It, they're either going to hit you or they're going to get out of the way. And the fact that slow reptiles like snakes and turtles can be on the edge of the road and somehow people just always seem to hit them. And, but this gives you a chance to look at the underside of the snake and see its coloration and see what I do with snakes. I move them off the road, dead or alive, because if they're dead, I don't want people to identify them if they're poisonous snakes and know where they're at and go mess with them. Okay? And if they're alive, I want them off the road so they, they can be safe. And I know people are not going to agree with me on this, but venomous snakes like rattlesnakes and the water moccasin or cottonmouth, they have a purpose. These are defensive snakes. They're not offensive snakes. All right? now, the rattlesnake has a rattle. It rattles to let you know it's there and it tries to get away. All right? Unless you step on it or go after it, it's not going to bite you. Same with the water moccasin or cottonmouth. The cottonmouth in this clipboard, I have the live one. I'm moving it off the road by just walking towards it and, it and it's getting out of the way. It's moving away and it's hissing at me. Let me know. Don't mess. Leave me alone. These snakes don't want to bother you. They want to get out of the way. They want to be left alone and they have a very important purpose. They're very good at eliminating excessive rodents which carry pests like fleas and mites which carry disease. So they do serve a purpose and if you stay out of their environment and leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. In most cases. there are, I know there are some parts of the United States where, and other parts of the world where snakes can be a problem, they have to be dealt with. But in this area and most areas, leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Uh, <clears throat> that being said, just check out the video, see what these snakes do, see what they look like, and uh, I encourage you to leave them alone, look at them, be fascinated by them, but Leave these snakes alone. They have a very important purpose in our environment. Thanks. Well, this one's dead. Got run over. That's a water moccasin. So hopefully this video at least helped clear up a little bit of the identification between the non-venomous water snake and the venomous water moccasin or eastern cottonmouth. The water snake can be a very long snake even though it's thick-bodied. It's not nearly as thick-bodied as the water moccasin. 
the wood or snake, non-venomous, is usually very dark in color, kind of a gray to black color. The banding on the snake is very difficult to see. It's a quick snake, okay, and it does not have that triangular-shaped viper head. Now, the wood or moccasin is often a short snake in comparison to its body thickness. It could be two or three feet long. They get bigger, but it's a very thick snake in comparison to its body length. It has that black tail, like the timber rattlesnake has a black tail. This viper also has a black tail, and it sometimes imitates the rattlesnake by shaking its tail. It also has that viper head, right, a triangular shaped head with a thin neck and a thick body. Very classic identification marks there. And its coloration, it'll be white or yellow underneath, kind of a black check ring. And as you go up around, it turns yellow to kind of olive brown. And it's going to have the black banding. Very easy to identify the snake. It's a slow-moving snake that often will hiss at you. Remember the triangle-shaped head and the thin neck, black tail, and the banding. Very easy to identify in comparison with the water snake, which you're not going to see the banding. It's going to be a dark snake, usually longer in length and very quick. So I hope this helped you out in identifying the difference between the water snake and the water moccasin. And hopefully in the future I'll be able to put out some more videos on snake identification and uh, showing snakes in their natural habitat. So thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned.